Today I want to talk a little bit about the power of judges in the legal system and what they do when they're faced with immigration laws that they know will lead to unjust results. Now, most people believe that the judge is in charge of the whole legal system and that the judges have all the power. Lawyers generally believe that too. We prepare our cases for the judges. We learn all we can about the judges we're going to appear in front of. Uh, and we do what judges say most of the time. But judges, even though they're treated with respect and honor, don't control everything. Judges' words carry weight, but the judge's role is to interpret the law, not to make the law. And when it comes to immigration laws, there are times when judges, even federal judges, find themselves in the uncomfortable position of having to enforce laws that they know will lead to unfair results. Sometimes, all that a judge can do is to use the weight of his or her words and the prestige of their office to try to draw attention to what it is they're being forced to do. A prime example happened three days ago in the case of Andres Magana Ordiz uh, out in the Ninth Circuit in California, where Circuit Judge Stephen Reinhardt found himself facing the government's request to remove Mr. Magana Ortiz from the United States. Judge Reinhardt has been a federal judge for more than 36 years. He knew that under the law, he had no choice but to allow the government to remove Mr. Morgana Ortiz. But he also knew that in this case, it would be morally wrong. So he did the one thing that a judge can always do. He issued an extraordinary written opinion in which he set out exactly what he felt and why he felt it. This opinion deserves to be heard as widely as possible. And so with your permission, I'm going to read to you from Judge Reinhardt's opinion. We are compelled to deny Mr. Orgbana Ortiz's request for a stay of removal because we do not have authority to grant it. We are not, however, compelled to find the government's action in this case fair or just. The government's insistence on expelling a good man from the country in which he has lived for the past 28 years deprives his children of their right to be with their father, his wife of her right to be with her husband, and our country of a productive and responsible member of our community. Magana Ortiz, who first entered the United States at 15, is now 43 years old. And during his almost three decades here, he has raised a family and built a successful life. All of his children, ages 12, 14, and 20, were born in this country and are American citizens, as is his wife. His eldest daughter currently attends the University of Hawaii, and he is paying for her education. Since coming to the United States, Magana Ortiz has become a respected businessman in Hawaii and well-established in the coffee farming industry. He has worked with the United States Department of Agriculture in researching the pests affecting Hawaii's coffee crop and agreed to let the government use his farm without charge to conduct a five-year study. In his time in this country, Magana Ortiz has built a house, started his own company, and paid his taxes. Although he apparently has two convictions for driving under the influence, the latest of them occurred 14 years ago, and he has no history of any other crimes. Indeed, even the government conceded during the immigration proceedings that there was no question as to Morgana Ortiz's good moral character. Morgana Ortiz now asks us to stay his imminent removal. Because we are without authority to do so, He will be returned to Mexico after having spent 28 years successfully building a life and family in this country. He will also be subject to a 10-year ban against his return, likely forcing him to spend a decade deprived of his wife, children, and community. This was not the necessary result. Magana Ortiz is currently attempting to attain legal status on the basis of his wife's and children's citizenship, a process that is well underway. It's been over a year since his wife, Brenda, submitted her application to have Magana Ortiz deemed her immediate relative. This August, his eldest daughter, Victoria, will turn 21 and will also be able to file an application for her father. All Morgana Ortiz asked for in requesting a stay was to remain in this country, his home of almost three decades, while pursuing such routes to legal status. It was fully within the government's power to once more grant his reasonable request Instead, it has ordered him deported immediately. 
In doing so, the government forces us to participate in ripping apart a family. Three United States citizen children will now have to choose between their father and their country. If they leave their homeland with their father, the children will be forced to move to a nation with which they have no connection. All three children were born in the United States. None has ever lived in Mexico or learned Spanish. Moving with their father would uproot their lives, interrupt their educations, and deprive them of the opportunities afforded by growing up in this country. If they remain in the United States, however, the children would not only lose a parent, but might be deprived also of their home, their opportunity for higher education, and their financial support. Subjecting vulnerable children to a choice between expulsion to a foreign land or losing the care and support of their father is not how this nation should treat its citizens. President Trump has claimed that his immigration policies would target the, quote, bad hombres. The government's decision to remove Magana Ortiz shows that even the, quote, good hombres are not safe. Magana Ortiz is by all accounts a pillar of his community and a devoted father and husband. It is difficult to see how the government's decision to expel him is consistent with the president's promise of an immigration system with, quote, a lot of heart. I find no such compassion in the government's choice to deport Magana Ortiz. We are unable to prevent Magana Ortiz's removal, yet it is contrary to the values of this nation and its legal system. Indeed, the government's decision to remove Magana Ortiz diminishes not only our country, but our courts, which are supposedly dedicated to the pursuit of justice. Magana Ortiz and his family are in truth not the only victims. Among the others are judges who, forced to participate in such inhumane acts, suffer a loss of dignity and humanity as well. I concur as a judge, but as a citizen, I do not. Sometimes all a judge has left is his words and the prestige of his office to draw attention to injustice. America's judges are telling us that our immigration system is broken and that the way the government is using its power to destroy immigrant families is at the same time destroying American values, American society, and American institutions. Is anyone listening? If we can help you, you can always reach us at 423-402-0608 or online at www.lesterlaw.org. Until next time, stay strong, stay safe. We'll see you soon.